Welcome back to the garden. You can see I was just taking a moment to sink into our beautiful foliage. Neil Drysmith joins us again. Welcome back after a brilliant session with potatoes. I cannot <laughs> tell you how much of a uh, positive feedback we had from our potato chat. That's great. Now, now we have moved on to edible flowers today. And clearly one flower stands head and shoulders above the rest, <laughs> the nasturtiums. Um, this is an incredible plant. As you can see, ours are going well. So clearly this is the right kind of, of environment to grow your, your yes. nasturtiums in. Yeah. yeah, perfect. North facing, lots of sun, no shade, well-drained soil, it's ideal. Okay, what makes this, this, this little flower and this plant so special? I could see you were like, oh, we've got tons to talk about with this guy. <laughs> it really is an interesting plant. Um, what, what makes it stand out? What is, first of all, from the, the edible standpoint, um, you know, tell us a little bit more of background about the nasturtium. You can use just about every part of the plant, wow. whether for, for cooking or for medicinal use. So it's a very versatile plant. Um, you know, just if we, if we have a, a brief look at the different parts of the plant, the flower is great for garnish, great for salads, very high in vitamin C. And they have quite a good taste, almost like a peppery watercress taste. Okay. Leaves, the young leaves, better than the old leaves. They're generally softer. Um, also can be used in salads, always a substitute for spinach. Okay. Um, so stems, a food yeah. Right here, yeah. The stems can be used as well. Um, you can grind up the leaves and the stems and use them as a tincture just to put onto a... It's got a ant natural antibiotic in it. Okay. So it can it be is. used for putting on grazers or open wounds, basically. Yeah, great. So very versatile. You can go bear gruels when you've you got can. a nasturtium in your garden. It's a full-on bear gruels plant. Uh, <laughs> no, it, as much as it looks like it's, you know, just throw the seeds and it's, it's going to grow. Clearly, we've obviously got the perfect setting for it here. <laughs> yeah, but what do we have to, to keep in mind now when we want to grow our own nasturtiums? Look, First of all, if you're going to grow from seed, give your seeds a good soak overnight. The seeds are actually quite hard and quite woody when you buy them. Okay. So put them in some warm water overnight, let the seeds soften up, then bury them about three centimeters in the soil. Well-drained soil, full sun, and they'll go. It's, they're really very easy and very versatile. Seasonally? When do we, when should we Look, you want to you want to get them in the ground late December, early, early November. Just, just before summer kicks in, so that you can harvest from, say, mid-January all the way through to March. Okay, so it's about a month, because these guys, I mean, I don't even remember having nasturtiums yeah, no, in the garden, and like now they've, <laughs> they've taken over. How do we keep them in check? What should we be doing yeah, to? You have to be quite <laughs> aggressive. They, they rampant grows. There are lots of different varieties. So there's some that climb, there's some that just form a neat bush. There are dwarf varieties, which are small, obviously. Um, this is just your common variety, which is quite rampant and fast-spreading. <laughs> so yeah. you, you've got to prune it back quite aggressively to keep it from taking over the whole garden, basically. You know, so. looking at this this beautiful flower, do we only get orange flowers? What can we expect in terms of the, the Anything furniture? from a, a pale cream it? or a, a yellow all the way through to dark orange, basically. Very, very nice. I like it a lot. So this is another one of those, those wonder foods that we can include in our food gardens as much as anything else. Exactly, it's a exactly. variety Everything of, of from uses. Everything the, from the seed to the bud to the flower to the leaves you can use. I mean, the seeds, when they're young and soft, you can pickle, pickle them and use them just as like a caper, basically. So it's very, very versatile. Absolutely love it. And um, just one last thing that came to mind, when you said the dried seeds, how long can you keep those dry seeds for before you plant? And um, is that something that applies with, with a lot of the dried seeds, rehydrating them before you, you replant? Look, if you pick fresh seed every year, you can keep them for a year, two years in a, wow. a cool, dry place. So if you scratch down in here, you'll actually find just dry seed that's fallen off from last year's flowering, basically. Brilliant, so. man. Absolutely. Well, I think maybe we need to find one more way of including these in a meal. <laughs> um, Neil Dreisman, thank you so much for joining us. Really, really interesting picking your brains with all things horticultural. <laughs> um, but yeah, who knew that we had such a gold mine in our nasturtium bush? Now, I hope you at home have been inspired to take a, another look at your own gardens. We're going to continue with the end of the show now. Just a few more stanzas to get through. A few more minutes left in the kitchen. Don't go too far. See you. Enjoy the little harvest.